first born of born of sin. He birthed he birthed sin. They told him that first child was going to pass, but he has no exception of his action. He tell him, he, I, I'm not saying my action is all this, that. He said, I, I, there's no exception the way I carry it on. Ain't no excuse the way I carry it. I could help myself. What I can. He, he's down to the lower point. He is big, complete to God. Complete. Consider it. Do not, do not have someone else to have wrong and you have an opportunity to fall short of your relationship with God. Do you desire to be forgiven in your relationship and be spoken? So David is working in it and he knows how to approach God. And he asks him all of these things, how much of them to heal me, Lord. Do not block my name out of the book, Lord. And we're going to continue on that one. Very selfish in his decision when he went up on the rooftop and saw that she was. He didn't think about nobody else immediately thought about himself and say, oh, I want her. Not thinking she could be married, she could have a family, where's her husband, do her husband. Who is this woman? He might have asked them a couple of questions, but he didn't go in depth into finding out who she really was and what she was all about. Because that decision he made, it, it just destroyed a whole lot of people. You know what else? You know, you said, you know, you said, you know, you said, you know, you said, you know, you know, you think that you know, 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 you to have wisdom and to clean and to be clean. And someone else who has been dipped in, they want the Lord to go out and wash, cleanse him. He wanted the Lord to clean and wash away and blot out all of the transgression and iniquity sin. As though that they desire a remanufactured heart. And you read about that in Genesis, the first chapter, in the 27th verse. And I looked it up, that's what they're talking about, when he created man. We're all right then. <laughs> and this is how we're supposed to be. We want to get it all out. They well, in a bad place. One of the things he desired most of the time in verse 11 was the power of request knowing that he had done the wrong and sin against God. It was, he wanted to be so much worthy if he did not have the present. In this case, I, I certainly, in these cases aside, was the throne always wonderful, wonderfulness and useless. They could not afford that. He, he could afford to live without live without feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit. And this is one of the things that when we do get straight with the Lord, we should feel the presence of the Holy Spirit of the Holy Spirit. That means he can forgive you. But the thing is that they he knew how the channels and the steps he's supposed to take. This is a, a complete repentant man being in the lead for all these things. And we Snatch down one, you can tore down the whole shelf of everything. So I need that Lord uh, to remake me, put me back in place, because I've messed up all the way down. If they even talk about nobody, they're talking about himself. In, 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 in this case, he's even going to remain in fact the heart. Lord, I don't want it anymore. We should feel that way. Our heart is broken. We've got to show the picture. Our heart is broken. Lord, what can I do to get this thing straight? Part of it is we don't want to depart from him. He tells us to depart from him. I know we're not. Bad time. But now I desire the Lord would restore and enjoy salvation. And those that David felt good about himself, you never feel the presence of the Lord, you have never change your life. You feel the presence of the Lord. And you ain't going to be like, I feel good for myself. It's a way how the Lord did you do it. And, and you know when you're tired, because David said you feel good by yourself, because the Holy Spirit came in. God said you can't have to run out of the place. Anybody can have two verses here. The need for a sincere repentance. If not, we're going to go to our last week and sufficient sacrifice. They will play the prayer. When the Lord opens down my lips and my mouth shall shoot forth thy prayer, and I desire not sacrifice, or else I will give it. Thy delight is not in very all. The sacrifice of God all over spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. So they may do it. Explain to me. I hear about it. How the intro, when the intro come in, like when, when it, it's a, it's talking about usher. You know, like it's saying, you know, like the hit song about the business and stuff like that. But like, it always, I mean, like it's, it's saying, like, you know, 
we, when we go over these lessons and stuff, we, we study these lessons so that we don't make mistakes that they made back then. And like, I have reference to now, when they're talking about Usher and what his song confession is, it referring to David like the same thing. And, it, and it's just like how we always say, you know, perfect in this generation, perfect in that generation. You know, this generation, it, it, I mean, you know how people be like, oh, it's different, it ain't the same as it was back then. And, and, but, but it is, you know, it's just, it's just different players. Like, like, you know, like, what I say, you know, it's just it's the same game, it's just different players in the game. You know, and, and it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just bewildering, like, to see this, and to see them talking about Usher on them, and referring to Usher to David, and it's this song, Confession, you know, and I remember the song. You know, from when I was you know, younger, but it, it is kind of like David in his song. But it's just like, that's, that's why we have, that's why we have to come in and study this. That's why we have to have this. Yeah. So we can, you know, learn from their mistake. And that's why we need to be here. That's why we can't take the same the same together, though. We got to be here. We, we need each other. We got to yeah. lean on each other. Like, you know, Jesus, Jesus could have did it alone, but he had to be disciple. So yeah, I mean, they weren't no gang, but they were, you know, I mean, they were different. They were saints. Yeah, I mean, it's just all, it's just it's a whole lot, you know, it's just a whole lot to, to take in. You Amen. Know, um, <laughs> everything, you know, everything that God, God said. And uh, like the last three verses, what he was saying, when he was saying that, um, when he was saying that, um, the light is not in burnt offering, and, and he don't like, the light is not sacrificing. That ain't, that, he don't, it, you know, the light, I mean, it's a nice smell in the room, but he, 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 he won't obey you. That's what he wants. That's what I want to say. And by that, the last verse, they, when you, when you've been converted, you got a prank. Yeah. You ain't going to hold it back. Yeah. Yeah. Hold back tears. You got tears coming. You ain't going to hold back. Because, um, you know, my mind went to the part of, when the part of like, cutting your hands off, cutting your feet off. You know, because you don't use your hands. I pray for y'all.
you want to be one of those some promise of a kid that you're going to give them something. Mm. Don't thank them that one time for that little kid. Remember you every time. Okay. And you don't give them, they're going to remember every time. They're looking for it. And, they, and you walk off and you got so many other things. But they can't have that middle of their mind. We know what you're supposed to give them. Anybody got anything else to add to the last reverse? My time is up. I just would like to say, just with, with me, I call it conviction. I have been convicted where I had to go and plead. I had to go and ask for forgiveness. I had to get on my knees and ask for forgiveness because the Holy Spirit within me convicted me so that it was like a dagger in my heart. And it, I had to go and ask for forgiveness just to mend it back all together. That's the only way I felt it. I just want to put it back on what my team was saying about conviction. I just want to add confession to it. Like, the, the, if, if Adam, I believe if Adam would have did what David did, we wouldn't be in this situation. Like, we wouldn't be, I mean, you know, Adam, he just decided to blame the woman he gave him, Lord. Instead of doing what David did, and, you know, confessing to his sin and acknowledging that, you know, like, that's why we heal. And like David, he knows, he, he, I mean, he know, yeah, he know what he was doing, but it was just like he got caught in, he got caught in his blood, covered him. And, and, and when they say God, I say, they was man truly after God hard, and he still beat him to cover him. And it, it just, it just, it just do something like to me, you know, like it's hard, but God say, you know, he will, he will. I mean, it's a daily thing. What we gotta do is every second, every minute. That's why we gotta stay, I stay proud. And I, I got, you know, we all fight with our own different demons. You know, these the, the demons, it's like these spirits we fight with. And, and it, it's hard. But, I mean, we say it'll be worried. But we have to confess our sin. I mean, like one of the Nathan had brought, brought it to David, what he did, and uh, reminding them, like, man, you, you covered him. You killed that man and took the man alive. Like, I can't do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, you didn't know you were doing it? You know, it's, it's just like, you know, it's, I mean, every decision we make, we got to you know, consult with God. And just, sometimes we just don't. We, we do it, you do it every week. He teach us the truth. And you know, like, when we fall short, you know what I'm saying? He have taught us the things that we have to do. And see, this is what David did. And commit what, what he's seen. You know what I'm saying? saying? And he repent. He
Saul as being the king. He knew that the Spirit of God was on him and in him. And that's what he worried about more than anything. You see, he understood that sin had separated him from God. And I want us to, uh, we find that we need someone to bring our sins to our attention. Amen. Amen. I've had to, the Lord had to let me know that person. Sometimes we think that people know better because of their age, because of who they are or pretend to be. So we say that I know a person knows better. We can look at David and say, well, I know David knew better. And he knew your eyes. Your eyes were very close to him. Your eyes was faithful. Definitely. But your eyes weren't real close with Joab. This is why when he sent the message to Joab, to put him on the front line. You see, a lot of times what sin does is when we allow sin to rule in our lives, it brings us into situations that we don't want to be caught up in. And because of his lust for Bathsheba, it brought him into a situation that he didn't want to be caught up in, and that was the impregnation of another man's wife. So to cover up his sin, as we do, we like to cover up. Cover it up. Put something on top of it. Yeah. Act like it's not there. Uh -huh. sure. So to cover up his sin, he said, I'm going to have your wife come in and get in trouble. And maybe he'll lay with his wife and during this time, then he'll think that the child is he. But the thing about it is, I want to show you something else about this. <laughs> because we take friendship. That must say. And we downplay friendship. That must say. Friendship is, is something very important. You only have a couple of them in a lifetime. Yeah. If you actually have a true friend. If. David, first of all, he should have been out at war with the rest of them. Mm -hmm. But he was the king. And sometimes position and titles, Caught up. it causes us to elevate ourselves into places that we are not. You see, we elevate ourselves into the place where God is, and it's God that has elevated us into the place that we are. So he felt like it wasn't wrong for him to have another man. As long as it was covered up and nobody knows about it, I think that's the way man thinks today. It's all right for me to do my thing as long as I don't get caught up. Mm. How do I know that? I must say I'm guilty. Man. There was times in my life when I knew I was wrong, but I thought the wrong would be the part of getting caught. And as long as I kept it where nobody knows, then I was fine. Or, oh, as we say, and we love to say it, keeping folks out of my business. All right. You might see what I'm doing, but you're not going to go tell them because you're going to have a problem. You need to mind your business. Not realizing <laughs> that my business was everybody's business. <laughs> Because if you put your business out here in the street, in the street. it's everybody's business. In the street. But this is the thing. We are such a small G God to ourselves. We feel like because it's me, ain't nobody got no business up in mind. Business for telling anything that I do. What makes you so special that a person cannot talk about the sin that you are out here doing? Mm -hmm. Such a God that nobody can talk about your wrong. Mm -hmm. That is publicly being displayed in the world. Mm -hmm. David was a king. Chosen by God. And too many of us are kings to ourselves, and we ain't been chosen by God. Mm -hmm. No, it's what we feel. Now, this is what I want us to see. When they went to David, he called David out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. got cute. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what happened to so many pastors today. You see, what David was worried about 
was his spirit, his relationship with God. This is what people try to do to you today. They try to kill your spirit to cause you to stop showing what God so tells us the truth. So I don't want to hear the truth and I don't want to hear what he has to say, so what are we going to do? We're going to kill it. But the way that Nathan went to him, and this is the thing. You see, when the man of God do what God tell him to do and bring him, and this is what the Bible says. The scripture said that the word of God will find you out. Mm. It don't matter where you're at, it's gonna come away in your, it's gonna come off into your bed. Yeah. I'm not yours. Man. Not, not. And everybody else, it's gonna come off into your bed. So now here is the man of God being chosen by God, sent to another man that's been chosen by God to be a king, to tell the king that you have seen. Mm. The king has the power to take your life. He had the power. Mm -hmm. But who are you going to fear? God. God, man, I can't tell you in our society today because it seems like man is fearing man. Mm. Mm. Not only are we fearing man, we fear what man can do to us. All right. mm -hmm. He can hurt my livelihood. Take my freedom. So we put more trust in man than we do God. In God. Nathan was God's source to bring the king's sin before him. True love. God chose me to be his source to bring your sin before you as well as my own. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Not that you are but mine also. Yes, sir. Man must first see his sin. How can you Know that you sin there, don't nobody bring it to your attention so you can see your sin. Now that your sin has been brought to you, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to admit your sin or are you going to get mad with the mayor man for bringing the mayor? Man, who are you? So you must first see your sin, then you got to admit Confess. your sin. And after admitting your sin, then you got to repent of your sin. After repenting of your sin, and repent means turn from your sin. Because admit your sin and saying you're sorry for your sin, but not turn. Although you've been forgiven of that sin, you've been restored of that sin, but you got to give an account. Of that sin. That's why I say believers, when you repent to unto the law, stop sin. Willfully. Because the only thing you're doing is heaping coal or fire on top of what you already got to pay. So now you got to pay for your sin when you didn't know, and now you got to pay for your sin when you do know, and you're going to try to tell God, I, I just couldn't help myself. Liar! And I don't know you turn the light because God said. God said, I will not put no more on you than you can buy, and I will give you a way to escape. So this is telling you that whatever that comes before you, you can handle it if you want to. You do all you can, and God does the rest. But in my mind, I kind of want to do it. And because I kind of want to do it, God understands. And I fall short of his glory. God sent his son to show us how flesh is supposed to be. Oh, I don't want to pass my time. I said, Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. Go ahead on. I'm actually going to leave it there. There's so much meat in there. Well, come on with it. See, they got to give me more time. All right. I'm trying to be That one of the I got to get more time. Because we have one always supposed to start us by seven minutes to start worship. Okay. So, but the thing is, church did this. You need to see your sin. Amen. So that, you know what? In order to see your sin, you need somebody who's going to show you your sin. Thank you, coach. Yeah. Now, once you see your sin, All right. you need to admit Oh, damn me. Yeah. You got me. You got oh, me. I'm so sorry. Yeah. 
Didn't be wrong with why about it. They might have done some everything. And some of them are supposed to look at it. They make it just sick. I ain't just, you know, we don't suppose to care on like that. Amen. When they come in, you're supposed to be loved. You're supposed to help nurture you. Be like you. That's what we're supposed to be. That's who we're supposed to be represent. That's who we're supposed to be imitating. That's who we're supposed to be showing the world what he looks like. Yeah. And I'm real quick. Last week, my wife and I were, had to go on a mission, and I saw a gentleman. And I talk about it all the time. We was in school, and we got in a fight. I had done something. I shot him wrong. And I jumped on that man. And, uh, Ever since then, I've talked about it, but it bothered me. Last week, Team. I saw that man, and I didn't actually know who he was. He didn't know who I was until we got close to each other. And uh, he was in, in need, and I was trying to help him. While I was helping him, I looked at him, and I said, man, I said, I, mean, I got to apologize. I said, back in the day, me and you got in a fight. I said, I was dead wrong. And as I'm telling him, I was dead wrong, and I'm sorry, he said, I accept. I accept your apology. Why do He said, but I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> he said, man, that been what, 40 years ago? I said, no, it's been 50. Oh, you remember. It's been 50 years ago. And he looked at me and he said, Pastor, he said, I accept your apology. Right. When I got in the car, I tell my wife because she had seen him too. I said, I had to apologize again. <laughs> she said, you must apologize again. From where did I live? I said, been bothering me. Yeah. Yeah. Even if yeah. he had forgotten, God had it. And you forgot. And I had it. <laughs> and that's what I told him. I said, I had forgotten. Don't forget. And God had forgotten. <laughs> and I didn't want you to know I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You see, if it ever get to the place where we done got too big to go to the point we were wrong, so wrong that must be Lord. Mm -hmm. I, I heard people say back in the old days that the old people they have stuff in them, they weren't gonna tell it, they weren't gonna apologize. Yeah. They said they're gonna take it to the grave. Yeah. Let the yeah. pad. Let me tell you something. And I want y'all better get this. Let the pad. You want to do with it. Yeah. If you got some message that you know you're the wrong folk, the people that right there, you can go into that person and look them in their eye and tell them you saw. And you said, I ain't gonna admit that I'm taking it to the grave. Let the pain. That's the worst place to take it. Let the pain. Because you're taking that unrepentant sin to the grave. Yeah. And you know, because if it bothers you, oh yeah, it, it, it bothers you because the Lord wants you to get it out. Yeah. But you said, I'm gonna override the spirit and I'm not admitting nothing. I'm not gonna admit nothing. I'm not gonna repent nothing. I'm not gonna apologize for nothing. And I'm going to my grave with it. And ain't nobody gonna know it but me and the Lord. Uh, you pay and it. correct. Yeah. And he the one you got the face now. Yeah. Yeah. He the one that tell you one or two things. Yeah. Well done. Deep part. Or deep part. Or oh, I think a devil you can say, get. 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 So, no, we need to keep those things in mind also. Is there anything else, any question coming that we might have? Because I don't know where we're going to be starting. We're supposed to be already in worship. We are in worship. I will in worship. Amen. Like Susan said, Yeah. But if there's nothing else, we're going to stay up with this message. Lord, 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 that that I learned, that that I learned, Lord, be that that I live, be that that I live. Yeah. 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 Oh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come today, Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Father, for waking us and closing us in our right mind. Thank you, Lord, for your hands. Come on, now, church. I know we can be better next time.
off the top because y'all did an outstanding job. Oh, yeah, 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we come today, Lord, we thank you in our heart that once again you have allowed us to wait this morning, holding us in our right mind, giving us the activities of our way, starting us on our way, and Lord, we thank you for giving us safe travel and grace to come out to the house of worship to receive a word to help us to be more like the example that you sent, which is your son of Jesus Christ, to help us to learn how to live a life that pleases you and at the end of our life that we hear you tell us where we're going. And Father, as I stand before you people, I cannot do this myself. But Lord, I'm very confident that you come in and fill me with your strength. And let the Holy Spirit be with me, Lord God, and do all that. Yeah, through you, you strength. Yeah. And Lord, I ask that you anoint my mind to think the thoughts that you have in me. And anoint your tongue and lips to speak the words you have to speak. Anoint the ears of your people to receive your word and apply the ground of our hearts. That your word may be planted in our hearts, Father, that we will live a life that is pleasing to you, a life that lifts you up, that you may be all me in front of you, a life, Father, that represents you, a life that imitates whatever is on, whatever really is. And Lord, that you grant us these things, we will give you, Father, and Lord, we ask that you will give each and every one of us in our sins and lead to what our mission to mission will have, Father, and your word, and help us to feast on your word, Father, and allow your word to become a part of our everyday life, that we start to live your word out. And your word starts to live from the dinner spot. And Lord, you say your word is eternal. You know, Lord, when we start to live in your word, that we are eternal also. And Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you bless this country and this world. National protection of those that are uh, being persecuted, Father, in high places in our government. We ask that you keep your hand of protection around them. Father, no great harm and banish the country of those. And Father, we ask that you go with them when you read them. We ask that you keep your protection around this world. We know that everything that happens to us in this world happens evolves around this world. And Lord, we ask that you help us to stay connected, help us to stay proud, and help us to be thankful. And Lord, we love you and we pray. We ask that you know what all about this sickness and you know every name on it. And if you have any name on that sickness that is not saved, we ask that you save the soul and make them whole. We ask in the name of Jesus that you know what all the bereaved happen. In that time on the reading, that you're shrinking away the weak and build them up with a torn down. Give them understanding in the place they don't understand. Father, give us understanding in the place that we don't understand. Lord, if we start to get weak in our faith, we ask that you will release our faith. Lord, we love you. Lord, we ask that you bless the time and offering that you lift for the upbuilding of the kingdom, that those who gain, those that have desire to give, that you can have to give. Lord, we ask that you save the soul of the Lord. I'm going to let you worry about it and come back home and accomplish that which you say you would do. Lord, we love you, we pray. And we ask these things to your love and son of Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to look at the sixth chapter of Matthew. And we're going to begin with the 19th verse and we're going to go to the end of chapter 6. Uh, but before we get started, we do have our uh, pledge that we say every Sunday. Are we ready? Are we memorized? If you have them, you have them on the back of your program. And I'm so honored to see my granddaughter who made it in. Amen. And especially the older one back in the back. You're so glad to see her. Amen. Praise the Lord, come back. Yes. This is. This is. My Bible. My, my best instruction before we heard. It is the word of God. God. I will say to show myself approved unto God. God. I, I am, am what it says I am. I can, I can do what it says I can do. do. Because God, God said it. I, I believe it. it. And that sells it. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to read verse 19. I'm going to read from the New King James Version. And when we get to verse 34, we're going to read it together. And I want us to uh, pay close attention to what the word says here. We're going to begin in verse 19. Verse 19 says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there 
your heart will be also. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Mm. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No way. No way.
Y'all yes, sir. We said he had about a wife, but then I'm just a little tired of him. Watch out now. So now, what we finna do when we gonna start here, I want y'all to understand something. I need to pray for being a foundation. Now, when we start in this sixth chapter, we're gonna begin with the first verse. You find that when it starts out in this chapter, he starts talking about how we do good to believe God. But what he wants us to understand about our charitable doing, in other words, we don't do things just for people to talk about what we've done. Right. Watch out now. We do things because we love the Lord and because I love the Lord, I love people because I love the people. I represent God by trying to help the people because God will provide me with a way to help them. This is the reason why he tells us about our giving. We don't do it just to be seen. You find out that when you get around about the fourth chapter, he starts now. In order for any of us to do good, any good whatsoever, to please God, we must pray. Yeah. Right. So as we're moving into this chapter here, we find that he starts to talk about prayer. That's something that everybody say that they do. The world says it all the time. You speak just about it. I, I heard people tell me you've got to stay prayed up. And I ask you a question, how do you say pray it up? I understand what God said, but he said we should pray without ceasing being a continuous thing. It is not a, a, a thing that you do today and you do it again next week. It's a continuous thing. That's the reason why we have to pray all the time. Yeah, because we mess up all the time. Yeah, so. If it ain't just for a thought that goes through our mind, it's all. A thought causes us to be separated from God. We got to go in prayer. Bro. Our eyes can call us to have to go in prayer. The word comes from our mouth can call us to have to go in prayer. So what we're continuous to do, we're continuously in conversation with God about our lifestyle because we want our lifestyle to be a lifestyle that pleases Him. So in order for you to do good, you first got to learn how to pray. So this is why we find in the sixth chapter, he told his disciples, he said, when you pray, you pray at this mouth. Now, he told us also how not to pray. Mm. You see, in this is the thing with so many of us, Be. we don't know how to pray when we say we're praying. Be. But now the thing about us with our prayer is a lot of times it's not prayer, but the will of God is the prayer for what my will is. What I want you is. see, there's a difference between praying to God and a prayer to please him for his will, than us praying to God as the will of God, and I want him to do what I tell him to do. And you heard what I said? Because when you ask God something, you're not telling him what you want to do. You're asking him what he wants you to do. Yeah. And this is what we have to learn how to do. We cannot do this, I will say. It has to be something that God himself Ain't no way. has to teach us. And this is why I ask the question so many times. How do you pray? Pray. Oh, you got to stay prayed up. Man. So I ask Well, that's when you, when you leave home, you got to ask God to watch over you. Okay. You got to ask God to do this. You got to ask God to do that. You got to care of God. I said, so, so you're prayed up there when you, when you do that. <laughs> While you're spending any time with God, no, I, I, when I pray every day. Are, are you standing away? No, I, I, I don't do that. Are you going to church? No, 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 I'm not going to hear that. What's that, God? I'm prayed up. But I'm prayed up because I beg God every day to give or do something. Me. Don't you think that sounds a little selfish? A whole lot. A whole lot. That means that somebody that admit the truth. You yeah. see, I was trying to make a way you might agree with me if I said just a little bit. A whole lot. No, no, that's a whole lot. Why? Because it's a selfish and self centered prayer. So now, as we pray, you got to find out something. You need to know how to pray, you need to know when to pray. But then, the thing with us is, after we learn the power of prayer, right. now, y'all need to, and, and, and if you had you went down through chapter 6, take a look at it. Because actually, he's showing us something, and what he's showing us, what we see today is that I got power in prayer. Okay? So now, once I learn how to got power in prayer, we got to learn what to pray for. Amen. In this moment. It, it, let, let me do it this way. Huh. You see, when we get down to uh, verse 16, sometimes along with prayer, you need faith. Yeah. You see, so what God is teaching us, 
You see, he sent the disciples out by two. They come back there with their sight. I mean, he sent out seven. They come back there with their sight. Why? Because he had gave them authority mm -hmm. over sin, yes. over yes. disease, Can't stop. over evil spirits, yes. over demons. Right. And they come back there with yes. so excited. Even the evil spirit got to fly out of But that was a spirit that they could not pray out of a person. So now when they came back to Jesus, he said, well, see, with some of these, it takes prayer and supplication. So it means it takes prayer and fasting. What's the purpose for fasting? Fasting is to deny the body of what it won't and be. When you weaken the body, I mean, it because when the body is strong, it's like boldly against the spirit. But when the body starts to get weak, it don't have the strength to fight boldly against the spirit. So this is why he said that we should pray and we should fast. So now, as we're coming into our text today, now that you've learned the power of prayer, the first thing that we start to do when our eyes start to look at the things of the world and the blessing that the world folk might have, we start to pray for things. Covenants. Uh-uh, y'all do? Yeah. So now when we get to our text, this is why he says, he said, do not let for yourself change the word, because now you start to ask for these earthly things, and the thing about it is, he's telling you how to give you these earthly things, but we start to put more into the earthly thing than we do in the God. Watch out now. So this is why he tells you, he said, now don't, don't you get this twist. Right. He said, I am a God, he said, the earth is mine, the food is there, all that So now, if it all belonged to him and you belong to him, we bless you with those things. But we get that twisted and start to look at the thing as being God rather than God blessing us with the thing. So we start to take the thing and put them in front of God. So this is why Jesus saying here, don't you start laying up no tree. What right. thing yeah. On him. All right. Why? Come on, feed and get to it. So what do this actually show that we get it? There's two types of triggers. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's earthly triggers. Yeah. And there's spiritual triggers. Okay. Now y'all didn't get it. Don't you understand that the God that we serve, when we start to build our treasure in heaven, the God that's in heaven causes our blessing to roll back that on earth. Come run it over. See y'all, y'all ain't getting it. Come on. I, I tell you, look at that. You ain't getting it. <laughs> Let me do this again. All right, do it again. Your blessings, you're building your treasures right. in heaven. All right. God is so pleased with your treasures being built in heaven as He's blessing you in heaven. They roll back down onto earth. Right. Take down. Good. Yeah. You see, he says in Malachi, he said, that I will pull you out a blessing. Stow that your stowhouse won't hold. Listen to what it says. He said, I will open up the window. Yeah. Not, not windows, not windows. Single. I will open up the window of heaven. Yes. I will pull you out a blessing that your stowhouse can't hold. Can't even hold. Jesus. See, this is the way it messes us up. Because when we start to look at the blessings of God, ruling on the people of God, it can lead somebody away from God because they start to start looking at the stuff rather than looking at God who gave you stuff. He blessed you right the time. Alright? Watch out now. Watch out now. But you spend your money in Las Vegas. Ooh. Ooh. Y'all got me get that. Uh -huh. I'm going to be the to heaven and rolling low, bring it all the way down here on earth to me, and as they're rolling on earth to me, I start to look at that thing in the world. Watch out, man. 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 Watch out,
See you seated. Somebody got to bring to our attention. Yeah. Yeah. Lord. Earthly riches All right. are corruptible. Mm -hmm. All corruptible, is that right? Mm -hmm. They are corruptible uh -huh. Uh -huh. and they are destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. Perishable. Your soul required. 
your soul will be required of you. Watch this now. Then, whose will those things be with you have provided? Verse 21. So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God in a fool. And in case you didn't hear me, let me say it again. A fool is one that runs behind the material things of this world and not a relationship with the Creator. Say it too now. Matter of fact, to be honest with you, a man is fooling to seek and to set his mind on perishable things that passes away. You can buy a car, brand new. Today, man can be a clean and one around. When you ride down the street, head to turn. Ten years from now, people ain't looking at it. Do you know why? It ain't got old. It don't look good as they used to. They done made some newer cars that look better. Where everybody, when you were getting everybody's attention, now you ride through and they don't even look up. Watch out now. Hold on, y'all, they're getting mad somewhere with it. So what you got to do to make sure people keep looking at you? Oh, great. You got to go get them another. So what are you doing? You are making a God out of the thing because you want people to praise you as you ride by. Oh, I don't want to to praise you yesterday. Heaven and riches are incorrupt. Heaven and riches never perish. They never spoil the faith. They are also kept in heaven for you. Matter of fact, that's why I want to pray for you, wonderful. Pray for you. Pray for you. Pray for you.
But in, in, in my life, I've only seen this one good time in my life that after death, the family came together instead of being separate. Wow. In my life, I've seen one family. Church family. One family. One family, they're part of the church. They take up what we call the old home house. Everybody put money in. And those that ain't got none, mm. they just go right on and do what they got to do with that other person is just as much a part of it as the rest. I ain't seen but one family. Hallelujah. Do this. Mm. And that's my wife. Some power. 
He got enormous power. And he been long in But he don't have all power. And that's the So now he ain't got to play with. So now, let us back up and now we're gonna go to Mark 8 36. Go forward to Mark 8 36. Hey, verse 36 says, For what will it profit a, a man if he gain the whole world, losing his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Now, watch this now. Well, who, whoever is ashamed of me and my words mm -hmm. in this adultery and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes into the glory of his Father. Will be holy angel. You see, the thing is, when we start running behind things and stuff, we start to deny God. Yes. Right. Matter of right. fact, we start to worship the thing rather than worshiping God. Do you know why I read you that same scripture twice? The Bible says, the truth lies in the witness of what? Two or three. Two or three. So you see, I can give you the same scripture from one person, I gave it to you from two people. Yes. I ain't talking about different scriptures, it's about the exact same thing. So what did God tell us? I mean exactly what I said. We're going to go on up here to Luke 9 and 25. All right. 9 and 25. Now, 25 says, For what profit any it to a man if he gain the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? Let me ask you something. Three. How many people ever been to a funeral? How many you holes you ever found behind her? Damn one. How many funerals you been to and they said we got to make sure we put all a so and so on money and jewelry in here because when he gets to the other side, he's gonna need his money and that jewelry to get in the gate. Put them all down there. Well, like you see, y'all let y'all miss the whole thing. But now the person who the, the living is like serving this stuff, the left the stuff here, his soul is lost, and the people left behind, they fight on the stuff. Y'all see? Eat at the butt. Daddy wanted me to have that. Mm -hmm. Mama wanted me to have that. Daddy it. told me that. Eat at the butt. Mama told me that. If you're a sibling, I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm going to just throw it out there just like you. Why are you arguing about what your mama and your dad had? Yeah. It ain't yours. Yeah, too loud. Yeah. Come together and just thank God and praise God for what they have had. And all of them use it together. What's wrong with it? No, grief, they won't let you do that. Wow. Grief, they I want it all. Oh, my. Grief. Oh, we don't understand greed is a trick. The trick of separation. So what you gonna have? You got greed in the family, then family separate. There you go. So how can a family please God to be the family of God when we are torn from the floor about the treasure of this earth? Somebody else do. That at the end of the day, if you got a day, you done took all the stuff that your mama and dad had, you got a day that somebody that can mom you. <laughs> so why are we fighting over stuff? Why are we fighting over things? When he done told them, don't be in your treasure here on earth, but moss and thieves can get to him. He said, be in your treasure in heaven, where moss and thieves cannot get to him. We look at, when we start to look at verses 21 through 23, we find that there's two kinds of hearts. Mm -hmm. You see, you got a good heart, mm -hmm. it's like a good eye. You got an evil eye. The eye, is a gate that gives interest to the mind of man. Right. You see, in our eyes, watch this, a lot of people say the eyes are the window, window to the soul. soul. Watch this, watch this. Our problem is, if we don't see things, we won't want them. Yeah. Watch out. <laughs> watch out. Mm. I saw it. I saw it. Say it true now. Say it back. Why do you think that we are living in a society today 
that could in any way you might know pretty much that people are exposing themselves Naked. as though they are a commodity. Mm. Because I want someone to want me. Look at me. I want someone to give me attention. attention. Yeah. There too. And, 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 and I, I want to see myself as being Something. royalty. There too. But I check myself as a peasant. Watch out now. Filth look like filth around right here. When we look at our society, come on, come on, come on. The trend that many want to have is self. Sometimes you can't tell if a person has clothes on or if they are on. Watch out now. No shame. It seems like to me, no we should be more concerned with what's inside what's on the outside. Yes. than the outside. Mm. Mm. I on. hope that one day everybody will have a spouse. Yes. Don't you want your spouse to have something? Control what our eyes look at. Yeah. What our ears 
masters. Can serve two masters. For you either will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. But you cannot serve God and man. Now, in other words, when you serve the right master, you receive the right lesson. Now, now listen to that. The thing, the reason that we cannot serve two masters, we don't love one and hate the other, because both masters call on us at the same time. You see, we don't ever admit the devil called on us to act up and the law called on us to do right. The devil said, be just like everybody else. The law says, stand for me. The devil says, lean in. The law says, lift him up. You know what they on. So now, y'all need to get this. Watch this thing. So now, the Lord is saying, lift me up. The devil is saying, let him down. And so what we going to do with the thing? How much the Lord? Watch this. Choice. So what we do? When God is talking on we start to tell God, I'm going to say it here today. Uh, watch but out. I'll be back later. And I want you to hear me. Watch out now. Hold on, man. Watch it. And, and I'm serving the devil. The devil is dreaming me. But God will come back over here to you because I need you to bless me. Watch out now. So when I get the blessing from God, I'm going to go back over here and serve the devil with the blessing that God gave me. I, I, I didn't make sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So now watch this, man. If I can't serve the devil and God, I got to serve one or the other. Is that correct? So now both of them call on me at the same time. The one I serve, the one I love. Mm -hmm. The one I don't serve, the one I hate. Mm -hmm. So if I choose wrong or right, I'm telling God, I don't want to hate you. Wow. Mm -hmm. I got time wow. If I choose to do wrong when I know right, I'm telling God, I despise you. Watch out now. And I'm telling Jesus, not with my mouth, Lord. but with my actions. I'm saying to Jesus, I ain't stuck what you did with me on the cross. I'm going to do whatever I want. You. And you know what else I'm going to do, Lord? When I get to do all I want to do, I'm going to come back to you and you're going to forgive me. Because that's what you died for, my sin, and you're going to forgive me. You're going to end up, the devil is lying to you, and you're going to spend eternity with it. Yeah. See, who got you do? See, hell was made for us, was made for him. Not us. So now, our choice determines our destination. Mm -hmm. So if I choose to go against God, then what my destination is? Yeah. If I choose to lift God up, where's my destination? Yeah. So who it is that makes the choice of our destination? Yeah. Nobody else. So we cannot blame hell, or well, we can't even blame God for putting us in it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We do that ourselves. We either serve God or we serve yeah. material yeah. things. And everyone, everyone, everyone without exception has committed their life to one of two trades. Mm -hmm. Mammon, money, mm -hmm. or God. Every person, every one of us. Mm -hmm. And I didn't say every one of you all, I say every one of us. us. We have committed our life to one trade or the other. Awesome. So many look at wealth. Now, this is what really gets us twisted. See, so many look at wealth as a blessing of God. It is a sign that God is blessing us. So, this is the reason that we go after the material thing. And we don't even talk about God, and we are so how God is blessed up, but we have no relationship with God. Mm -hmm. We're instead of running behind the thing, instead of running behind Him. Right. I work seven days a week running behind the thing. I ain't got time for you, God. Mm -hmm. I work six days a week. I'm too tired on Sunday to give it to you, Lord, because mm -hmm. I'm trying to get me some bread. But you know my heart. Oh. No, this ain't about God knowing your heart. It should be about God seeing your heart. Uh, let me get over to this. When we look at uh, verses 25 through 32, it shows how we deliver. We deliver from work, anxiety, and about the necessities of life. It don't matter what we need for the body, we need food, shelter, clothing. We don't even have to think about no thing. Why? Because God has told us how we supply all we need. Let me tell you something. We wouldn't even say that. Oh, the Lord wants to supply all my needs. 
and then go right around and go against what we say. Because I think I see Sir God saying, I need you to spend time with you. No, I see Sir Bethel here. God said, I'm making way for you, but I oh, know that it's for me. I see Sir Bethel here. She thought, I need this. God said, I know everything you need. I know I'm going better than you do. Oh, you got to do it. Ask me. No, I'm not. Nice. No, what I see over here, I ask you to move over here. Then he said, go over there. No, he said, go over there. But I see what's over there. And I think if I see it over there, and I ask him, he's going to bless me with it because I see it. Faith is not what you see. No. That's our problem sometimes. We got to see everything. Got to see it. And what we do, we see our way right with him. Now, I'm going to say, Lord. We don't even know it. Let's run over here to 2 Timothy 2 and 4. Sometimes we, we bring more on our Savior by not spending time with 
They had two kinds of food. They had two kinds of drink, and they had two kinds of clothes. Right. Temporary and eternal. Right. See, God himself gonna close those that belong to him. I can't wait to see the road. Okay. Whatever it is God got for me, I'm gonna be at that bank. I've been to a lot of banquets, and I've been to banquets from the highest ranking people on in the United States down to the lowest ranking. From the president down to the our house, we call it. I've been there, but I ain't never been to a banquet in hell, and I want to go to a banquet in hell. I've never seen the road that God has for those that come to hell. I don't see that bad. That man is put on at the banquet. The best of people. The best down. The best that nice. Disobeyed. Right. And through what did he fight in the cross? 
our spirit will be united with him. And I want to ask us this question. If we can ever do anything good enough to get to heaven, why do we not send this one out of here? Why would you have to take off the royal robe of being worship? Be cast into some clay that he made. So we can come down here and be rejected by the one that he made. What's the Lord? Suffer all the way to death for the one that he made and died for them. Mm. If he had to go through all of that suffering and we could have just been good people, why did he have to come? I don't care how good we think we are, we'll never be good enough to make it in God. Oh, yeah. When you're born in sin, you shake the iniquity, you're yeah. filthy, all of us. And when I say we, that's me too. We are filthy. The Bible says when we at our bed, we just like a filthy rag sight yes. of God. Can you imagine our impurity trying to make it into a pure place? That's why Jesus came down here, did what he did for us. That's why Jesus is not satisfied to go to the cross. And the Lord Jesus that they put on the cross for sin had to be paid to death. Sin was dead. So it had to be paid on Jesus that died on that cross for your sins and mine. It was Jesus that went down in hell to keep you and I from having to go. It was Jesus that God the Father looked at the payment of a 